Hi guys, it's Amanda Watson from MrsWatsonEducation.com and this is my third video in a series of blogs to help you make a virtual classroom Bitmoji style that you can share with your students and families and anyone you want to share it with. Now my first two videos were all about designing the classroom and inserting your custom Bitmoji. So if you're looking on the screen and you have no idea how to do that, you might want to go back and review and watch those because that's a good place to get started. So let's get looking at at how to actually share the hard work you have been doing. So I'm going to go to my actual screen so you should be able to see everything and I want to talk you through the different methods of sharing. Now if you are very familiar already with Google Slides, you may not want to watch the next like five or so some minutes because I'm going to be talking about the basic sharing and what that means for this. Um, when I talk about forced copy, that's something new I learned, um, which is really cool in sharing documents with uh, like other teachers. And then um, I'm going to talk about the bottom part, which is brand new information to me and my preferred method of sharing my Google uh, emoji style classrooms with other people. So that would be towards the end of the video. So let's get started. For those of you who have no idea, this is your first time working in Google Slides, how to share anything with Google Slides. So at the top of the file or on the page, you'll see the yellow, big yellow share button. Now there's a few features in this that you should be aware of. The first thing is if you change, so it's already preset to anyone on the internet with this link can view. That means when you get this URL that it's going to generate for you, anyone you send that to will be able to view it. If you change this to, and some people do this and don't realize they did this, restricted, that means when you send the link, they're going to have to send you an email so that you could grant them access to view the same thing you were already sharing, which is, has its benefits, but it's a headache. You have to respond to each individual email every single time someone logs on from a different place. So I wouldn't recommend that, but that's an option. So you want to make sure this is in the anyone with the link. It's the normal preset one, so that's good. There's a few options here. You could be a viewer, which means that the um, person getting the document will be able to see the slideshow. They'll be able to see the slides on the side. They're going to be able to um, click through and see everything, but they won't be able to change and make changes and edit the document, which is really nice. Um, when you do that, now this is my file, so I'm going to have access automatically to it. Um, I don't want that there, I want that there, sorry. When you do that, you share it, they're gonna be able to see the document just like you sent it to them. Um, and if you make changes and they view it later, they'll see the changed document just like they sent it, you sent it to them. Um, but you're gonna to have to teach the people that you send it to, to go into file and make a copy of the entire presentation to be able to go through and manipulate things, which has its benefits, but it's a, a training tool that you'll have to do, um, which is okay. Oh, goodness, I'm a big hot mess. Okay, so the next thing is commenter. So that is what it sounds like. When you share this link with anyone, they're going to be able to see everything. They won't be able to edit. They can still probably, they can still make a copy, but they can add comments to the side. So that's really good for peer review, um, which is really nice and unique about Google. Uh, next thing is editor. It's just like it sounds. Anyone with that link gets basically a copy of your uh, access to not a copy, the version, the original document. That means they can make changes that will be changed on your file. Um, so unless you really trust that person and you're collaborating with them or uh, for whatever other reason you're sharing with your um, like another account that you have, your school account, your private account, I wouldn't recommend doing that because even though Google has the really great um, revision history that you could change things back to, it's a headache. So always, I prefer if you're doing this just to, just to share it with as a viewer and then you're done. So within that, there is this, so we just talked about that, this force copy apps aspect of sharing. Now I think this is fantastic. So, uh, and especially like this is how I'm sharing my documents with you through my blog so that you can make a copy of it. So what you do for this is you copy the link, you enter the URL into your browser and on the top you're going to change the URL just a bit. You're going to erase that last bit from the edit and you're going to change that to copy. Okay, just that. Everything else stays the same. So I'm going to hit enter and this is what you will send the URL. You'll send to people. Um, this is what I link in my blog like I said and now anyone that gets that link instead of being able to see everything and having to 
file, make a copy. They have to make a copy right off the bat. It's going to make a duplicate copy of your document, put it into their Google Drive so they can have access to it and then they can change it and edit it all they want and you won't know anything about it, okay? Which is great. Um, this will only update as much as you've updated yours. So if you send make a copy and you change something a few weeks later and they already made their copy, their copy won't have those changes made to it. So that's kind of a downside to that. Okay. Next thing you can always do is save it and, or, and then send it as a PDF or a JPEG PNG. Now, the best way to do that, well, fastest way, and there's some benefits for doing that, is you're going to go to the top corner and you're going to, oh, sorry, it's, so that's what it normally looks like. Go over to where it says download. You could download as a PDF. And when you do that, you'll see it actually downloading on the bottom of the screen right there. Um, and then I'll show you why that's cool. You could also download it as a JPEG or a PNG. Beware if you download it as a JPEG or PNG, it's just going to be a picture of your slide. So that's kind of helpful if you're making like a background for your slide that you want to have that you can't move things around in, in the future. So you figured out what your room wants to look like. You haven't added the links to it. So you could download that as a picture and then upload it as your background. So that's kind of nice there, but I wouldn't share it that way for my students um, because none of the links work but if you share it as a PDF file and this is all three pages so okay so make sure you know that um, when you share it that way the cool thing about PDF files and this is what my original thought was before I learned the cooler ways to share um, is that all the links are live so you can click here it goes to my blog website, okay? This will go to the safe YouTube video we created, okay? Those links are all still there, which is fantastic. Downside, and my internet's pretty slow right now, it seems, but we're making it work. The downside of um, downloading something as a PDF is that it's a fixed document then. No matter what changes you make will not be affected on that PDF file, which is nice in some ways, but, um, that means if you're uploading it to your, um, your grade book for references or if you're uploading it to your websites, okay? Every time you make a change, you're gonna have to re-upload it, which is what I'm trying to avoid. I wanna make my life simpler. So I'll show you the best way to do that. Another way you could do PDF though, just in case you're not sure, you could always go into print preview aren't going to print. Um, I choose to do this. This is how I always shared my documents with my students previously. I go into, you have these options, save as PDF. I want to do only page one. I don't want them to see all the other things. Then I can save it as PDF. It'll generate the file just like download as PDF. And um, you can share that that way. So that was what I used to do. Now I've learned better. Let me show you the amazing stuff that I've learned. Okay. So this is sending it as a preview. So you're like, but there wasn't a preview option. Okay, this is where you have to change the URL code just a little bit, but it makes your life amazing. So I'm going to go make sure it's viewer, anyone with a link, copy that link, put that into my web browser, and I'm gonna, before I hit enter, I'm gonna change the code again. The first thing I'm gonna do to change the code is I'm gonna change it to preview. And when I do that, it's going to do what it says. It's going to show a preview. So now you, your students or your parents or whoever you put this link to is going to be able to see your document. Everything is live that was supposed to be live before, but you got rid of all the sidebar and all the Google Slides tools. Okay, very cool. It's almost like a website. Um, on the bottom, there's a bar that you could go through to navigate different things with, um, which is kind of nice, kind of frustrating, and sometimes if you want it just to be that one document, you have multiple pages. Um, in the future video, I'll show you how to make that a little bit easier too. But that's awesome. The greatest thing about sharing it this way is that any changes you make, let me show you, to your live document. So I'm going to add, I'm going to do this, format options, change her around to look at that side of the room, okay. Made that change on my live document. Remember, this is what the URL already showed me. I'm going to refresh the page, so that's the student going on the next day, and magically, it's refreshed. So this is a game changer for virtual learning because you could have your agenda, and at night, after you're done, you could change it out to the next day's activities and the next day's links, and the next day when your students log in, they don't have to find another um, place for your materials. They don't have to look for that again. It's already changed. Oh my gosh. I don't know how many times I make typos and I have to like re-upload a document. This eliminates all of that. So there's, I'm just like blown away by this. This is my preferred method for sharing and I hope you're just like 
much mind blown right now as well. So the other thing you can do, it's very similar. Um, that is if you don't like that menu bar on the bottom, what you would do is delete the back part of the URL, go preview. I can't spell preview, that would be a problem. Pre preview, question mark, RM equals minimal. And that's basically changing the code just a little bit. And when you hit enter that way, now it's, you don't have that scroll bar to navigate through the slides. Um, it's just the actual presentation. Now, if they click on the slide, it's gonna automatically go forward as well. Oh, I have them hidden. Oh, I'll show you why I didn't do that. Um, if you didn't have your links hidden, your slides hidden, it would go forward as well. So that's kind of a problem. But what I did is I selected the slides I wasn't wanting to show. I hit skip slides, and so they have that slash for them. That means I could still manipulate them and do whatever I want. But when I publish it as a preview, it's not going to be visible no matter where my students click. If you didn't have those slides, um, hidden right there. Whenever they went there and clicked on something that wasn't a URL, it would have automatically progressed them through the presentation like a PowerPoint, but it's not there. So yay. Okay. So those are my, uh, hopefully mind blowing educational mindset shifting. Like I was just blown away by all of this. This is why doing all this work is worth it to me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope your students will enjoy this in the future. I hope you spend more time with your family instead of uploading documents now and answering student questions about where to find things because this is what this is supposed to be. This is um, how we can make this craziness of distant learning and home learning and all sorts of being in the classroom and students going and coming back. And I don't know what's going to be in the future, but I do know making this will make everyone's lives a little bit better and give everyone some more consistency. So thank you for watching. Remember to go to my blog, www.mrswatsoneducation.com for more information. And I hope to see you in the future. Bye.